Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. Driving home from work. Today at work we did our uh, breast cancer awareness uh, day. We got to wear pink. Wore the pink Hulkamania shirt. Been uh, holding on to this shirt for probably at least 10 years. Wear it once a year when we always do this uh, this deal. I don't even think the, uh, the Komen company does WWE anymore because of the whole... Uh, Connor's cure but then again they don't really shove that down our throat anymore so I don't, I don't really know if they're doing that either but Cody Rhodes recently did an interview um basically where you know he talked about you know a gold dust Dustin Rhodes um being somebody that could go into the WWE Hall of Fame that he felt that he deserves a spot in the Hall of Fame and that uh, he was a, a very big part of the the Attitude Era I think the gold dust definitely was somebody that opened the door to the Attitude Era. I, I can honestly remember you know, there was a lot of changes going on in my life. They, when Goldust came on the scene, I honestly really didn't understand what he was. I think that um, Vince used to call him like ambidextrous or something like that. It was, it was some word that uh, I think says that you like males, you like females. I think that was their way of like not saying the word like gay or, or homosexual or anything like that. It definitely was weird, you know, to see like gold dust, you know, trying to, to, to kiss Ahmed Johnson or, you know, Razor Ramon. Um, I, I, I mean, it had to have been one of the heels in the wrestling business that definitely push the envelope honestly almost more than than any other heels ever done before and you know since um the the shock and awe has worn off uh from from gold dust you know he definitely around 2002 uh when he was electrocuted by uh, evolution uh he had the whole uh you know uh storyline of basically having Tourette's after that and he, he became like a, a really good comedy factor the one thing that you know never really is said about Dustin Rhodes himself is the dude is a fucking good wrestler you can really tell that you know he was trained um by by Dusty Rhodes um you know he really you know took to what, what Dusty taught him and you know he He's textbook, you know, what a wrestler should be. You know, the, the guy is awesome. I think that, you know, years ago um, that there was a story um, that Goldust was, was trying to get WWE to make, like, a, a documentary uh, or a disc series set on him. I honestly said at the time, I'm pretty sure, that if they made a documentary on him, it would be freaking awesome. But I really felt like if they just put out like a three disc set of like Gold Dust kind of introducing the matches as they come along, it wouldn't have been that great. But, um, you know, to cover, you know, what was the natural um, Dustin Rhodes, uh, you know, him coming in and getting his like debut match. Um, at the Royal Rumble, his whole storyline with him and his dad, and he wouldn't sell his seat to the Million Dollar Man and Virgil because he wanted to see the match that was going on in the ring, and that, that set up the match at the Royal Rumble, um, where it was Dustin and um, Dusty against uh, Million Dollar Man and, and, and Virgil, which <coughs> is their last match in WWF because Dusty got his job back in WCW as like the head booker and um, Vince decided that it, you know, it was fine for him to leave and even though that is like his last match in the company they didn't really bury Dusty and Dustin even though they were leaving the match you know they lose but it, it's more of like the split of Ted DiBiase and Virgil um, setting up their match for WrestleMania as well as SummerSlam 1991. Um, that 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 match is all about. But like, I would love to hear the inside story of like, you know, they're getting a huge storyline, a huge push for for the debut of Dustin Rose, and they're just like, yeah, peace out, we're out of here. <laughs> I, I understand that the wrestling business was a little bit different back in the 80s, the 90s, than it is now. Um, and Vince kind of made agreements like hey if I'm not going to be using you 
uh, in the spot that you think you should be used in, I, I have no problems with letting you go. But now it's kind of like, you know, storylines and um, co contracts. There's no way in the world that they're just going to let you leave and go to the other guys because you're just got a, you got a better situation coming up. It just doesn't really make sense. Um, you know, there was a time period where uh, Dustin was was a little bit messed up in his life. He wrote about it in his book. I believe his book is called is it called Crossroads? Um, it might be. It's it's been a while. I remember I bought it WrestleMania 27, and then I ended up uh, reading it um, on uh, the plane on the way home. I bought it because I was in his line at Access. I didn't get a chance to meet him, but. The book is really, really good. It, I mean, it touched on wrestling. It touched on his life. It touched on him being a father. Um, it, it, it really is a good book if you go out of your way. Um, I doubt it's in print anymore. It, 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 it's kind of old, but I'm sure you can at least pick up a used copy and, um, and give it a read. There's a page in there about, it, about what it, it means to him to be a father and have his daughter in his life that I remember it touched me. And I remember that like, I was kind of like, this is the kind of father that, that I want to be at that point in my life. And I remember tweeting that to him and he blocked me. I, I, I think that definitely around that time period, he was having a hard time in his life as well. And uh, he, he was just kind of blocking people on Twitter for, you know, here I am like putting them over, telling them I bought his book was awesome and this one page yeah i feel like touched my life um <laughs> and, and and he didn't appreciate it I, I i don't really get it but um you know uh you know dustin when the whole attitude era was really going down i remember him you know coming um back as kind of like the the preacher deal when the gold dust thing ran out. Oh, there also is that time period when he was like with Luna and the whole X and M stuff. I think that was kind of like when the gold dust character maybe needed to be refreshed in a different direction. I think that like S and M gold dust definitely went on a little bit too long. Um, definitely a time and a place for it, but like maybe a two, three month deal, but it felt like it just went forever. And then after that, he ended up like being like this preacher guy who felt like he had been saved and he needed to be saved. And he came out like waving the sign. And because he loved God, it made him a heel. That it didn't really last long. But I remember him like kind of like having a feud against Val Venus. That's kind of forgettable. Um, him, you know, going to WCW to like do the Gold Dust character as seven. Them pitching that huge vignette him coming out doing the entrance then as soon as he got into the ring kind of being like yeah this thing sucks i'm not doing this that's like one of the most vince russo things of all time i remember in the dying days of wcw like the last final weeks they were doing the roads it was dusty and dustin going up against rick flair and um jeff jarrett I, I kind of remember some of that stuff being good some of that stuff being like really touchy like southern wrestling that just didn't hit with me um but you know I, I i remember when they were doing a thing when cody rhodes had been fired by triple h on raw and then like um gold dust was coming back to save his career Goldust wasn't even in the company he had you know been in tna he had done this that and the other it was a really really probably the darkest part of his life um but he came back and they just caught fire um where basically they they had um seth rollins and roman reigns against cody and dustin for the tag titles uh, where the Rhodes family, you know, they, they won the titles. It wasn't like the biggest, longest run with the tag titles. But they, they, they were like, it was definitely not the first loss for the Shield, but it was the biggest loss um, for the Shield. I think the first time the Shield lost, it was against like a weird three-man team of, I think Daniel Bryan was in there. But I uh, maybe like one of the Usos. It, I, I, it, but... The shield was, was was so huge when they when they first got there, but um, 
uh, Dustin Rhodes, you know, he he left WWE to go to his brother's company, AEW. He became one of the coaches. I believe he's some kind of a trainer there. Um, he wrestles still to this day. I think it'd be weird for an AEW current wrestler, especially a guy holding, I believe he's like got two championships. I think he's the tag team and as well as the six man tag um, for ROH. Um, but I mean, I think it would be weird to do that. It's not impossible. I mean, they put Ric Flair into the Hall of Fame with the Horsemen when Flair was a member of TNA. But then there's a story out there that they told AJ Styles that they didn't want him going to the TNA Hall of Fame. Uh, I, I still need to read that story because I had made a video the other day bitching about why is Rhino going to the Hall of Fame and not AJ Styles, especially with the working relationship between NXT, WWE, uh, and TNA. Uh, to this day, it doesn't really make any sense, especially with AJ not really doing anything, unless it's gonna hurt their whole is AJ hurt storyline, non storyline. That I, I don't really know at this point. I guess AJ is hurt, <laughs> but um, you know, I'd love to see it, but I, I guess as of right now, I, I don't think it's gonna happen this year, but uh, definitely, especially with Cody um, being you know, as big as he is in the company. It makes a lot of sense for him to, you know, put his brother in there, which would be cool that him and his brother inducted his father, and now he's going to induct his brother. <laughs> and then you got to think of like long term down the road of Dustin, you know, doing the favor for Cody someday and uh, putting him in the Hall of Fame. So, all right, we're out of here. Talk to you guys down the road.